So this is David. Hello, my name is David. And David was able to go from 570 to 750 on his next SAT in a matter of just a couple months. And in this video, I'm going to share with you exactly what he did and how he was able to get that transformation to go from missing more than half the questions on the math section and running out of time all the time to getting almost every single question correct and having 10, 15, 20 minutes left on the math sections. People often talk about the scores they got, but they rarely talk about how they were able to get there. And raising a math section score is essentially a same process every single time. So if you can find out exactly what they did, all you have to do is just copy and paste what they did to your SAT prep, and you're going to get the exact same result as well. And if it's your first time here, my name is John Jung. I've been an SAT math tutor for the past 10 years, and my specialty is taking a student who's currently in four, five, 600 range to 700 plus by their next SAT. So to give you guys a little bit of background, David was in the 500s, which means he was having, just like all the other students, he was having trouble solving these questions correctly. He just didn't know how to solve them, didn't know how to approach them, didn't even know where to start. That was problem number one, didn't know how to solve these questions. Second problem was that, kind of ties into the first one, he was having time issues because he didn't know how to solve these questions. So he would end up spending more and more and more, more time than he should on each of these questions. And he just ran out of time and couldn't even try the rest of these questions. So these were the problems that he had to fix and here's how he fixed it. So the very first thing you should do is step number one. The very first thing that David did was he focused on mastering the 25 concepts that were tested on the SAT. No more taking practice exams, no more taking practice sections, no more timed exams, nothing drop everything and focus only on learning these 25 concepts. Because on the SAT, there are only 25 things you need to know. Outside of these 25 concepts, it's not going to be tested on the SAT. And why did he have to learn these concepts first? Well, because if you look at section three and section four, this is what the exam looks like, right? And what happens is on every single one of these questions, it's essentially testing you on one of these 25 concepts that are tested on the SAT. So what I mean by that is, Look at this question over here. This question is testing you on linear model interpretation. This question is testing you on concept of lines. This question over here is testing you on the concept of functions. You see how every single question on the SAT essentially ties back to one of these 25 concepts. What that means is if you are having trouble solving any of these questions on the SAT, that's because you are shaky on the concept. You have a weak or no understanding of the concept. That's why you are having trouble solving these questions. For example, if the question was testing you on like two times two, if you know how to do multiplication, which is a concept, if you know how to do multiplication, you're going to be able to answer this question just like that. But if you don't know how multiplication works, if you don't have an understanding of the concepts, no matter how much time you spend on this, you're not going to be able to solve this question. And that's exactly how SAT is. Every single question is testing you on one of these 25 concepts. And if you're having trouble, you need to go back and learn those concepts. And by learning all these 25 concepts, David now became capable of solving every single question. You guys remember the two problems that he had were that one, he couldn't solve these questions. He didn't know how to solve these questions. And that problem was solved by mastering the 25 concepts that are tested on the SAT. And if you guys want to get this full list, you guys can download it in the Discord server, which I'm going to link it down below in the description box. So mastering these 25 topics was pretty good. He was a completely different person now. He could now solve every question on the SAT. But the problem is SAT, there is a time limit. You have to solve these questions not only correctly, but you also have to solve them very quickly. And one of the problems that David had was he was having trouble finishing the sections within the time limit. So how can you solve these questions a lot faster and solve them quickly? Well, that's where step number two comes in handy. This is exactly what he did next. He mastered the question patterns on the SAT. All these questions that you see on the SAT, you actually have seen them before on the previous practice exams. They just look a little bit different. But the good news is they are essentially almost looking the same and they are solved the exact same way. So here's what I mean by that. You see these three questions over here. They are all from, believe it or not, all from the different SAT exams. But if you look at them closely, they kind of look similar. Here's what I mean. We have a small triangle within a big triangle. Small triangle, that's not triangle. Small triangle within a big triangle. Small triangle within a big triangle right? And they give us side length like so. And they are asking us to find length of AC, find the length of the missing side. 
or find length of ADX, which is length of this missing side over here, or find what's the area of the triangle. For you to find the area of the triangle, you need to find out what the missing side length is. So you see a pattern here, two triangles, and it's asking us to find out what the missing side length is. And whenever you see a triangle inside of a triangle, this question is testing you on the concept of similar triangles, and you just have to use the short, long, short, long method to find out what the missing length is. And if you have no idea what I just talked about, I'm going to link a triangle lecture video that goes over this short, long, short, long method in the corner right there. But what you need to understand here is that SAT questions have certain patterns. Okay. You see how I saw a triangle within a triangle and realized that, oh, this question is testing you on similar triangles. Just like that, so many of these questions on the SAT, they have patterns. And as long as you know exactly what to look for, you're going to see the question and you're going to know exactly how to solve that question. You're going to know exactly what method, what concept to use to solve that question. And that's what allowed David to not have time issue anymore and solve these questions very quickly and correctly. And what I mean by that is in every single one of these 25 concepts that are tested on the SAT, right? Whether it be for functions, for quadratics, for synthetic division, whatever the concept is, there is going to be some kind of pattern associated with these types of questions. And as long as you master these patterns, you're going to know exactly what to look for and know how to solve these questions. The moment you see it, you don't even have to read the question. You look at the question, you find the pattern and you're like, Oh, I'm supposed to do this. I've seen this question before. So here's what I mean. Let me give you another example. So these are again, three different questions from three different exams. But do you see a pattern here? We have two equations right here, two equations right here, two equations right here. And it's talking about no solution, infinitely many solutions, or well, infinitely many solutions. It's giving us two equations and it's talking about number of solutions, right? This one comes from the concept of systems of equation. And these questions can be solved using what's known as the matching rule, which again, if you don't know what matching rule is, I'm going to link a video over here and also in the description box that teaches you what the matching rule is. So that way you will never miss this question again. But for now, what you need to take away here is that every single one of these questions are coming from one of these concepts and every single one of these concepts have some kind of question patterns that is specific to the SAT. And as long as you know what these patterns are and know what to look for, that's what allows you to solve these questions very, very quickly. So quickly to recap, learning the 25 concept is what's going to allow you to solve every single question correctly. And step number two, mastering the patterns of all these 25 concepts is what's going to allow you to solve every single one of these questions quickly. Solving them correctly quickly is what allows you to hit 700 plus, And that's how David was able to go from 570 to 750 plus, but that's not everything. There's one last step. And step number three is just practice exams. After you learn the concepts and master the patterns, you kind of have to fine tune them so that you are ready for the actual SAT, the exam date, the big day, you have to become ready for it. And when it comes to taking practice exams, there are a couple of things I really need you guys to know. And that is first, make sure you avoid using these old SATs. What I mean by that is, you know, those college board practice exams on the, on their website, there's like 10 of them, exam one through 10, but they took out exam two and four. So there's only like eight exams left. These are good exams, but they're not the best exams because these exams are actually pretty old. They're from 2016 and 2017 when the SAT, the new SAT was first introduced. And since then, SAT has evolved. Questions got more difficult. They introduced more topics. 2016, 2017, these eight exams do not show these changes. And what ends up happening is people take these exams and say, oh, I am getting 700. So my score is going to be 700. But whenever they take the official SAT, they end up getting like 620, 650, and they are sad with their score. They have to go back and study the SAT again. It's just not the best use of your time. And you might be asking, John, how can I get these new exams? Well, here's how you do it. I'm going to link it down below. There is a Reddit. There's a subreddit for SAT. There's like a forum community for people who are studying for the SAT. And there is a collection of 10, 20, 30 official practice exams that are pretty recent. These are getting updated every single year. So whenever you need new exams, this is the spot to go to. But before you take the new exams, this is the most important thing. You have to make sure that you're taking these exams the right way. And what I mean by that is I'm pretty sure you have seen these people where they take 10, 20, 30 official practice exams, and their score is just not going up. And they are now out 
of official exams to practice with. And it's going to take me like 30 minutes to give you a full picture on how to take them the right way. So I'm going to give you a quick summary and tell you what you should do and what you shouldn't do. So first of all, you should never take exams after exams, after exams, after exams. Taking these sections is only going to give you about 20% of the improvement. The other 80% is going to come from reviewing the questions that you have missed. And that's where you should be spending most of your time. Do not take exam after exam, after exam, take the exam, spend one or two hours reviewing those questions, and then move on to the next exam. The key is to spend time reviewing the questions that you have missed. And second, what you should do is every time you get a question wrong, make a list of topics you have missed. So whether it be you missed exponent, you missed percent, you missed triangles, circles, word problems, make a list of concepts that you have missed. And before you move on to the next exam, go to the concept, whatever you're studying with, go to the concepts and focus on repairing these concepts. You missed those questions because you were shaky. You were lacking something on some of these concepts because these questions are going to show up on your next SAT again. And if you just move on without repairing these concepts, you're going to continue to miss the exact same type of questions and your score is going to stay the exact same as well. Where you are losing your points are, are shown right here. And that's what you need to focus on. And that was one of those things that allowed David to go from 570 to 750 by going back and spending time on the wrong concepts and repairing all the wrong concepts by going back to the lecture and going to the concept summaries, he was able to repair every single weakness that he had, and he was able to get all the questions right on his next SAT. And that's exactly how David was able to go from 570 to 750. Step number one, master the 25 concepts, which I'm going to link it down below. Step number two, master the patterns. And step number three, Take the practice exams, not the old ones, take the new ones and make sure you're taking them the right way. Anyways, I hope you guys found this video helpful. If you guys have any questions, leave it in the comment section down below. Thumbs if you guys liked it, subs if you loved it, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Hello, my name is David and I, about a month ago, bought the SAT Math Accelerator from John. His course, it's really a great course. When I first bought it, I was very hesitant because it looked very sketchy on the website. Like, a lot of discounts, I don't like that. But my math score was around a 550, 560, and it was consistently that. And so I was just, I pulled the trigger, I'm like, okay, let me see if I, if I lose, it's not that much money that I'm gonna lose. So I tried it out, and it was, my score really increased to now like 700 plus every time. I only get five questions wrong usually per test, practice I take, and it's really good. But you do have to put in the work for it. It's not something that's just gonna be like magic. I, I did one lecture a day for about a month and that's how long it took to finish. So you do need about a month to finish the course and it will help. But if you put in the work, if you actually do it and do follow the directions he gives you, your scores should increase exponentially, like rapidly, it will. It's a very good course. And personally, I think this course is better than 25 hours of a 1v1 math tutor. Only because one, most tutors, math tutors, they would teach you how to do a specific question. And now you know how to do that question. However, you don't actually understand the deep concept behind the question. How to apply what you're doing to a new problem. So you know how to do, you understand why it works for this problem. So you know exactly how to solve this problem. But you're ne unfortunately, you're never going to see that problem again. And because of that, if you don't know how to apply it to a different problem, then it's kind of useless. John really teaches you the the concept behind everything so you're able to easily apply that concept to any type of problem that SAT might throw at you so it was really a great thing for me and now I'm very happy and if you want to just take a chance and do it I would suggest it helped me I remember I was watching one of these videos too